Okay, uh, in the last uh, lecture we discussed about fallacies of uh, informal fallacies in particular red herring and straw man and then we also discussed something about uh, fallacies arising out of weak induction. So, inductive arguments can be weak when especially when the conclusion of course probably follows from the premises, but premises are not strong enough to provide evidence to believe the conclusion to be true and so these are they are all come under the category of fallacies of weak induction. So, under fallacies of weak induction we discussed one particular kind of fallacy which is some which is considered with a mistake in the argumentation especially when the arguer is uh, citing some kind of unqualified authority and then he poses some kind of conclusion then the arguer is said to have committed uh, this particular kind of fallacy which is called as fallacy by appealing to unqualified authority. So, uh, one ex some of the examples which we discussed in the last class sometimes you know uh, let us consider some more examples uh, uh, to establish this particular to understand this particular kind of fallacy. For example, if you say this that uh, all of us know that professor Amartya Sen is considered to be a well, a well known economist Nobel laureate etcetera. Suppose if he all of a sudden he starts talking about uh, some a different kind of topic you know let us see what is there in this example. Professor Amartya Sen universally respected economist and the author of argumentative Indian has said that destruction of tropical rainforests is one of the 10 most serious worldwide problems you know. Thus it must be the case that that is indeed a very serious kind of problem. So, the arguer here and we know that you know economist will have expertise in some areas and all probably may be in economics partly be in mathematics may be because economics requires strong mathematics foundations in mathematics or maybe some other areas which are slightly connected to economics you know. All of a sudden if we start I mean suppose uh, somebody is referring to uh, someone who is considered to be an economist and then trying to talk about uh, something related to deforestation etcetera and all he may not be having that particular kind of expertise and all then clearly we can say that. So, the arguer is said to have committed uh, this mistake in the argumentation in the sense that he is citing unqualified authority you know. Professor Sain might be having authority in some other areas such as economics, welfare economics etcetera you know. So, in this case the arguer is said to have committed uh, kind of fallacy which uh, which arises due to citing unqualified authority. So, uh, there are some kind of questions we need to ask ourselves to judge when a, an authority is reliable, unreliable etcetera. Suppose if, if you say that everything the president says is true and you will all also say that the president says that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction etcetera. Now, of course, the president has authority and then uh, in, in the case of uh, in Indian context if the prime minister says something then you know you will definitely say that uh, usually will not talk whatever uh, he wants to talk and all, but uh, a well established kind of things usually he talks and all. So, if the president of United States for example, says that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction therefore, Iraq has mass uh, weapons of mass destruction and all. It is most probably that you know you will usually believe that uh, conclusion to be true given the premises are true and all conclusion probably follows from the premises since the president of United States of America is saying that Iraq has weapons of mass addiction probably you might believe that it is true. And all. So, there are few questions which we need to ask ourselves to judge that uh, whether a person is having a qualified whether person is considered to be having genuine authority a qualified authority or whether the arguer is citing some kind of unqualified authority. So, these are the critical questions one need to ask oneself is the proposed person or source a genuine authority and all. In the last example Professor Sain seems to be talking about uh, some kind of deforestation etcetera and all then we said that you know he does not seem to be having some kind of expertise in that particular kind of area. And all. Had it been the case that he spoke about something related to economics or something like that definitely you know that seems to be some kind of genuine authority and all. And the second question which we will be asking ourselves is is that did the authority make the attributed claim or not if the answer is yes again it is it is considered to be some kind of qualified authority if it is not then it is coming under the category of unqualified authority. The third question 
is this that are the authority and claim made whatever is made is relevant to the subject matter or not if you make some kind of irrelevant claims etc and all then it is called as it is come under it will come under the category of unqualified authority. So this is what is considered to be a fallacy by by citing some kind of unqualified authority. So it is not all the time you know it is easy to judge whether a person is having authority in that particular area or not because a person may be expertise may be having expertise in more than one particular kind of subject matter and all branch. So okay so we will move on to the next kind of fallacy. So this kind of fallacy arises because of uh, ignorance. So it is it is called as appeal to ignorance kind of fallacy. The structure of this argument is like this. This statement, whatever the statement which is uh, trying to prove, this statement has not been proven true, and hence the conclusion is is that this statement is false. So it is it it is taken for granted that nobody could prove certain particular kind of thing, you know. For example, if you say that nobody has proved the existence of God, so that's why I mean God doesn't exist. You know, uh, that he may be uh, that this statement may be reasonably believed to be false. Or the other hand, suppose if that statement has not been proven false, you know, nobody has proved the non-existence of God, you know, nobody could prove that God doesn't exist. You know, they couldn't even prove God exists, and God doesn't exist also. They couldn't prove. Now, in this case, the conclusion is is that this statement is obviously true. Since nobody could prove that you know it doesn't, it is not the case that God exists and all. May probably he might exist and all. God actually exists and all. So the structure of the argument is like this. We can draw a diagram to see what goes on here. So this is like this. Your premises will be like this. So. The premises will be this that uh, nobody, nobody has proved, nobody has proved that X is true. The other way of stating the same thing is this that nobody has proved that X is false. So then from this. So this is what is uh, uh, we have some ignorance about this particular kind of thing. At this moment, the arguer knows that I mean nobody has proved that some x x can be anything. It can be existence of God, existence of electrons, or maybe any other thing and all. So other believes that nobody has proved that x is true, and hence x is false. Suppose if you take into consideration this one, nobody has proved that x is false and all, because nobody could prove that x is false. Maybe it might be the case that it is true and all. So this is probably be the corresponding thing is this that from this you can show that x is true and all. This is another kind of argument which we can use. So if this is the case, then it is called as appeal to ignorance kind of fallacy. So let us consider a simple example to see how this fallacy arises. So you must note that in all these fallacies that we have been discussing so far, or maybe discussing later also, they're all coming under the category of some kind of persuasive mechanisms. So ultimately, the arguer's intention is to, I mean, persuade the reader or listener to accept his claims. So let us consider one example for. Is appeal to ignorance kind of fallacy. After centuries of trying, no one has been able to prove that God exists. They have tried miserably, and they tried and failed miserably. You know, many scientific theories have come into existence, but they could not establish that. They could not prove that God exists is true. So the attempt seems to be futile, is useless, etc. So at this point, I think we can safely conclude that there is no God. Nobody has proved that God is true, and hence that that is the reason why it is false that God exists. You know. So, if you conclude in this particular kind of sense, then that means what happened here is you can't prove based on because there is no proof which is existing. You know, that doesn't mean that a particular kind of sentence can be false. You know, 
it might be the case that someone else might prove it in future or something like that it may turn out to be true also. So this is what is called as ignorance in the sense that you know at this moment you do not know that this, uh, this is the case and all. So based on that kind of thing you jump to a conclusion that x is false and all nobody could prove that x is true that means x is false nobody could prove that x is false means that x has x is true and all. So nobody could uh, uh, prove that for example in the case of crow's example nobody could prove that crow is white in color so then you will infer that you know crow is black in color but you might find a crow in which you know um, somebody might prove that uh, the next crow that he is going to see might be white in color also that makes the conclusion does not follow from the premises. So in the same way uh, in the courts also you will find uh, this particular kind of uh, phenomena that unless until you are proved guilty uh, uh, then you are you will not be punished and all you will not consider to be uh, guilty and all. So unless until you, you are uh, it is proved in the court that you did this particular kind of uh, mistake you will not be made guilty and all. So just like in this case you cannot prove you did not steal that car so you must be guilty and all. So in that case you know nobody could prove that he has stolen the car and all so that is why probably you may not be guilty and all. So, so these are some of the things which come under the category of uh, fallacy by appealing to ignorance and all. So something that is not proved might still be true or just as something that does not is in that is disproved might also be false and all. So that makes this argument uh, uh, fallacious and all. So this is what is appealed to ignorance kind of fallacy there is obviously certain things which will not be uh, knowing and all. So that is what we are calling it as ignorance and all. So the other interesting kind of uh, um, fallacy which arises in all inductive generalizations which we spoke in the last lecture where you know whether we try to justify when we try to justify inductive generalization then we are referring to principle of uniformity of nature and we are asked to justify principle of uniformity of nature then again we are falling back on induction and hence leads to some kind of circularity and all. So uh, all inductive generalizations if it is not used uh, properly then it leads to some kind of generalization which is called as hasty generalization. So hasty generalization is uh, exactly um, opposite of fallacy of accident that is the one which we have uh, seen earlier. So this is like this so let us compare fallacy of accident which is called as fallacy of relevance and the hasty generalization. So this is what we have said fallacy of accident. So this is what is uh, fallacy of relevance. So this is what we have discussed in greater detail earlier. So now just I am trying to compare this thing with uh, hasty generalization. Generalization. So now you have a general rule which is uh, misapplied. A general rule which is misapplied to some kind of specific situation. Then it leads to this particular kind of fallacy which is called as fallacy of accident and we said in the last lecture last few lectures that uh, freedom of speech is considered to be constitutionally guaranteed right and all. If this that is applied properly and all there is absolutely there is no problem and all. For example if that is applied to a specific situation in which a religious leader uh, speech has invoked some kind of reorts and all. So then this general rule that is freedom of speech is a constitutionally guaranteed right is misapplied to this particular kind of specific situation and that leads to this fallacy of relevance. Why I am talking about this fallacy of relevance in this in the context of hasty generalization it is simply because of this that hasty generalization is converse of this fallacy of relevance that means here it is the other way around 
that is a specific case is misapplied and then you will infer some kind of generalized general rule. So, a specific case not representative representative of whole population whole group or population or a class or something like that. Uh, and then is not misapplied mis and generalize so a specific case not representative of the whole population or sample or a group based on that you generalize it and then form some kind of generalization that is usually called as a general general rule then that is called as a hasty generalization in day to day discourse we will be using this particular kind of generalizations all the time usually we call with a different name that is sweeping generalizations and all. So, what are these sweeping sweeping generalizations and all in some cases it uh, it is a case that does not mean that it works in all the uh, cases and all. So, what is a hasty generalization hasty generalization is an inductive argument obviously you know uh, you will be moving from particulars to generals that means you will be making some kind of uh, inductive generalization. So, in which one makes fallacious inference from relatively small number of cases to a generalization about a class of instances and all you take very small group into consideration and then you start generalizing it and say that it is representative of the whole uh, group or class and all. For example, if you say that uh, one or two students in the entire class a class of 100 students one starts cheating and all in the examination and all. So, that does not mean that in an entire class is uh, considered to be cheating in that particular kind of course and all. So, from two uh, students uh, uh, cheating in the examination that does not mean that entire class is bad and all. If you make that particular kind of uh, generalization what we are trying to do is a specific case that means one or two students are uh, uh, creating problem in the course cheating not representative of the whole population and all 98 percent are honest and uh, they are good enough and all. So, from that you generalize and say that form a generalized rule and say that entire batch of PHI 142 they are all cheaters etcetera and all then that particular kind of person who is making this argument is said to have committed this fallacy which is called as he has made sweeping generalizations and it is called as hasty generalization. So, when it occurs it occurs when there is a reasonable likelihood that the sample is not representative of the whole group to just two students or one student has committed this mistake and all it is not representative of the whole class and all. So, such a likelihood may arise if the sample is either too small that is one or two members exceptions or it is not even sometimes it is not even randomly selected and all. For example, in a bag of rotten bag of tomatoes just you found one rotten tomato and all just by seeing one rotten tomato that does not mean that it is a maybe entire basket of tomatoes is bad and all or you do not choose any tomatoes from that particular kind of bag. So, it is not representative of the at least some sample at least you know you have to be collected in random at least 10 5 6 at least uh, whatever you have collected it from that particular kind of bag they are all turned out to be rotten then you can infer that probably all the tomatoes in that bag are rotten once and all. Here the sample is if the sample is not selected randomly or if it is too small then it is obviously called as a kind of weak inductive kind of argument and all. So, to make a case that this particular kind of fallacy has been committed what one needs to do is this that the number of instances in the premises do not warrant the inference to the general class of which those instances are a member and all. That the what one needs to show that number of instances in the premises do not warrant the inferences to the general class in which those instances are a member and all. So, one needs to be able to show that this kind of generalization does not follow and all. So, from one particular kind of specific case and then you generalize to a general rule then you are said to have committed this kind of mistake in the argumentation which is called as hasty generalizations. 
So let us consider some examples to establish this point and all where we are trying to make some kind of sweeping generalizations. Suppose if you say that most of the Ford's Ford cars are bad and all. So from that if you infer that I once owned a Ford car and it was utter junk and all. So suppose if you infer this particular kind of thing it so happened that you got a defective kind of car and from that you cannot infer that all Ford cars are bad and all. Here the conclusion is this that all Ford cars are worst bad and all. Why it is the case he is giving this kind of reasoning and all. I once owned a Ford car and all and all the time it created problem and then there was some engine starting of engine all kinds of problems etc and all. Ultimately it so happened that you know out of your bad fortune or something like that you got a defective car which could not be repaired etc and all Then so happened that it was it turned out to be a worst kind of experience for you. So from that you know you cannot generalize and say that all Ford cars are wa waste etc and all bad or worst and all. In the same way in the second example if you if the arguer is arguing in this sense diverse is rampant in America Mary someone is saying I heard that 40 percent is communicating to Mary in saying this particular kind of I heard that 40 percent of the marriages end in divorce within three years. So I have decided not to marry you because the odds are against you and all odds are against us means that you know we might belong to this particular kind of 40 percent of the category and then there is every chance that you know we will get separated after three years and all based on the statistical data that they have. It does not make any sense to talk about this particular kind of arguments and all. I mean uh, the, the person who is making this argument is, is making some kind of sweeping generalizations and all, or it is called as hasty generalization. Suppose in the third example suppose if a concerned citizen says that this man is an alcoholic so then liquor should be banned and all. Suppose he has seen one drunkard who is behaving in a very bad way bad manner etc destroying the property all kinds of things then you say that you know all the liquor should be banned and all maybe sometimes you might use it in a in a proper sense and all but just because of one particular case which has happened uh, does not mean that you should completely ban the liquor and all. So like this a frustrated Ford owner might say that my car broke today Ford uh, that, that is why you know he wanted to reach a particular place but he could not reach because his car broke down today. So ultimately out of frustration he is saying that forts are worthless pieces of garbage etc and all and goes on so and so he says then the arguer is said to have committed this particular kind of mistake in the argumentation which is called as uh, he said to be making sweeping generations and all is uh, just because of one specific case you cannot move and say that for all the uh, other uh, things which is which which represents a particular kind of sample this particular kind of thing follows and all. So these are some of the examples of sweeping generalization which is called as hasty generalizations and all. So again you have to note that uh, premises are not sufficient enough to provide uh, evidence to believe the conclusion to be true probably true in that particular kind of case and hence them it makes that argument a weak argument. So the next kind of fallacy which we commonly see uh, in day to day discourse also is this that it is a false cause fallacy. So what is a false cause fallacy it is another kind of uh, fallacies of weak induction. So what happens here is this that uh, one will be illegitimately assuming that one possible cause of a phenomena is a cause although the reasons are lacking for excluding the other possible causes and all. There will be several causes etc and all for the same event and all so same phenomena. If you do not consider the other possible causes which are very important then you must be ignoring some of the things and all. So a false cause fallacy might arise in different ways especially when we confuse temporal succession with the causal consequence that is when we take one event to be cause of another simply because one event happened before the other if that is the case then uh, uh, this false cause fallacy arises. It so happened that you know for example every time you came out of your house and you could uh, witness cat passing through and then something happened you fell down from your cycle bicycle or somebody has uh, in, uh, shouted at you in the office or something some bad thing might have happened. You know. 
so that, that happened every every time a cat passed through you know that does not mean that car cat passing through is is a cause for your miseries etcetera you know it has nothing to do with that particular kind of thing you know or sometimes uh, when we mistakenly take one event to be the cause of another that is when we assert that the one event is the cause of the other and we might be simply wrong about that particular kind of thing you know that may not be cause of uh, that particular thing at all there may be some other important causes for that particular kind of thing so we we have said that arguments from cause to effect are inductive arguments they can become weak in the sense that Mm, when we confuse temporal succession with uh, causal sequence there leads to a problem and in the same way one event to be the cause of another one when we assert that one event is the cause of another one but we might be simply wrong you know. So false cause fallacy might also occur when many causes are operative but one of them is illegitimately assumed to be the sole cause you know there may be very important causes uh, which might be existing for the explaining the effect and all but you rule out uh, the most uh, you take into consideration uh, uh, a particular kind of cause which may not be directly relevant to the effect and all in that case also this false cause kind of fallacy arises. So let us consider some examples to establish uh, this uh, particular kind of thing and all. So before that uh, let me uh, draw a diagram for uh, this false cause fallacy so this is like this so false cause fallacy simply arises uh, because of this you have premises mainly arguments from cause to effect will come under this particular kind of arguments and all. they are all inductive arguments they are weak arguments in a sense that here are premises and of course you have the conclusion usually it will be some kind of causes and this will be an effect and all sometimes you move from effects to causes also this is also another kind of inductive kind of argument. So now it depends upon the movement from premises to conclusion depends upon uh, non existent non existent and minor causal sometimes that may not exist in all there is any relation causal relationship between uh, the cause and effect that you are trying to say minor causal connection. So it depends upon either it is a non existence uh, causal kind of relation or it may be some kind of minor causal connection and all. So if that is the case then this false cause kind of fallacy arises in all. So now let us consider some examples to establish our point. Since I came into office two years ago, he joined a new job two years ago. The rate of violent crime has decreased significantly. You know. So that is what one police officer is trying to say. Let us say. So it is clear that longer prison, longer prison sentences we recommended seems to be working. You know. So so they somehow recommended that person who is committed uh, to some kind of crime and all they were sentenced for a long time and all 10 15 years etc and all. So they were under the impression that it started working you know longer prison sentences that they um, offered to the prisoners it, it worked and all. So that need not be the sole cause for this particular kind of reduction in the uh, violent crimes and all. it might have been reduced by some other causes might be there and all it is not solely due to the long term sentences and all. So this is not the only cause and all so it happens because that it depends upon non existent and maybe sometimes the minor causal connection uh, etc. This might, this might be imposing long term sentences may be some kind of non existence cause or maybe a minor causal connection uh, to the fact that you know rate of violent crime has decreased significantly and all. In another instance for example the example 2 the best professional cricketers receive big salaries these days you know everyone knows that they receive big salaries. So therefore in order to guarantee that Ravi will become one of the best professional cricketer we should give him big salary now. 
suppose you start giving big salary he might uh, he might spend it uh, peacefully and then he may not become a cricketer uh, as if you forget about the cricketer he may not a professional cricketer but he may not become a even cricketer also he might become an actor with that particular kind of money if you pay that much salary you know so this is a false cause and all so that's why it is called as false cause analogy you know so ravi becoming one of the best professional cricketer has nothing to do with uh, paying big salaries and all so you should not be paid any big salary in this particular kind of case okay so if suppose if you say this particular kind of thing the scores of standardized tests have been dropping for several decades what accounts for this now you are trying to understand the causal factors for this particular kind of thing well the argument is arguing in this way during these last few years the average time the student spends watching tv playing games in the computer per day has increased so the cause is obvious students are distracted too much by watching too much tv dc plus plus or whatever they download from that particular kind of thing when they need to be reading instead so instead of reading they are distracted to downloading some of the movies etc they are distracted from that particular kind of thing but there might be some students you know who might be downloading lots of movies and all these things but yet they perform well in the exam and all but this is not uh, the only cause for their uh, for the dropping of uh, uh, the performance uh, of scores in the standard eight tests and all there will be several other causes which we need to take into consideration and all but the arguer here is trying to uh, present uh, some particular kind of causes a minor uh, causal connections between uh, the problem of standardized uh, tests scores of standard eight tests which is falling to the distractions that the students come across and all so there may be several other reasons or causes uh, for the reduction or dropping of uh, performance in the standard eight tests and all it is not solely due to watching tv or dc plus plus etc and all although there may be some of the causes for this particular kind of thing reduction but there may be several other things and all which we need to take into consideration okay in this case there are many other possible causal factors which needs to be considered for example in the first example that we if we have said that long term sentences etc and all will prevent uh, the crime rate etc and all in that particular kind of case we can ask several other uh, questions uh, ex, uh, like uh, uh, have economic conditions have been improved or more jobs available have the demographics of the area changed so that the population of young men statistically the group most likely to commit violent crimes etc these are responsible for it are is smaller relative there is enough patrolling in the nights all these things are relevant causes for this particular kind of thing uh, this is the one which uh, we are trying to say yes uh, since i came to the office 2 years ago the rate of violent crime has decreased significantly so it is clear that long prison sentences be recommended are working so that may not be the sole cause and all but there might be several other things there are other things like uh, uh, these things police patrolling in the nights they might be a sufficient cause for that particular thing or have the demographics of the area changed so that the population of the young men statistically the group most likely to commit violent crimes all these things are important factors to uh, causal factors to be considered rather than imposing long term sentences you know so in the same way in the third example uh, which we have discussed earlier the increase in time spending in watching movies playing computer games is likely contributed to the drop of scores that no doubt that is the case or uh, maybe their performance in the end some mid some exam but insufficient evidence is provided for the conclusion that the time spent watching tv and dc plus plus is the sole cause and all there is no sufficient evidence to believe the conclusion to be true so this is not the sole causes and all there may be several other causes which might be operating you know okay this is what is false cause kind of fallacy now we will move on to another kind of fallacy which is very interesting uh, which is called as slippery slope kind of fallacy all of us might be aware of this uh, slippery slope uh, is the one which we used to play in our childhood somebody who is uh, dropping from above ultimately he will reach down and all without any much effort and all so 
this is one special variety of false cause fallacy and is also called as slippery slope kind of fallacy. So this fallacy occurs when the arguer assumes that a chain reaction will occur but there is insufficient evidence that one or more events in the chain will cause the other one. So the diagram for this particular kind of argument is like this so with the diagram we can explain slippery slope kind of fallacy. So usually we say that this, this can be treated as some kind of slippery slope and somebody who is there here without any effort obviously he will come down like this usually it will be the actual slippery slope will be somewhat like this and all. So but whatever it is it is the case and all. So now so this is what is considered to be the first innocent step and all. So the other the arguer argues that this if you if you make this first innocent step and all then it triggers another important uh, as a reaction to this it leads to this one and then again it obviously leads to this etc and all ultimately at the end it is going to be some kind of disaster. And all. So a single uh, innocent step uh, leads to some comment of complete disaster and all. So the idea here is, is the arguer presents in such a way that he says that you know if suppose if you make this particular kind of step this leads to the next worst step and all and this leads to automatically the next worst step there is no way to come up and all. So you will be falling all the way towards the disaster and all. So here in this case uh, one is causing another one another one is causing another one this is the causal chain and all one causes another etc and all ultimately the end result is some kind of disaster and all. So if that is the case then it is called as a slippery slope kind of fallacy and all. So this fallacy occur when the arguer assumes that a chain reaction will occur uh, chain reaction in the sense that for example this is the first step A B C D this this triggers B B triggers C and C triggers D in every case you know there is no way in which you can come up and all. So you will be moving towards the disaster only. So this is the next worst step the next worst step is this the next worst one is this ultimately the end result is complete disaster. And all. But uh, the problem here is, is that this first innocent step may not lead to this particular kind of disaster and all the chain reaction might not actually take place and all but the arguer presents in such a way that you know if you take this one it leads to this actually this may not be the case and all and if you take this one this leads to this this and all ultimately it leads to disaster and all. So these are some of the examples for uh, this particular kind of argument so one example could be like this they are very interesting and exciting examples and all but actually you know this disaster may not happen in these examples and all that we are talking about. So somebody is arguing in this way never buy a lottery ticket now that is the first innocent particular kind of step and all if you buy that particular lottery ticket and all so now the arguer is arguing in this way that triggers another one people who buy lottery tickets soon find that they want to gamble on horses so next they develop a strong urge to go to some kind of Las Vegas to bet their life savings in the casinos etc and all betting was common there in all these kinds of games etc. So now the addiction to gambling gradually ruins their family life and eventually they die homeless and lonely and all. So the first step here is, is that buying a lottery ticket and all that makes that need not have to lead to this particular kind of thing that they want to gamble on horses and all. So just because buying the lottery ticket that does not imply that you know even if they, they get money in the lottery etc and all does not does not mean that you know you will make bets on horses etc and all and then making bets leads to some other thing like uh, uh, he is not happy with that particular kind of money and then you will move, go on and move on to Las Vegas and bet their life savings in the casinos etc 
all these things may not uh, one may not lead to the other one and all. The first innocent step is is that buying a lottery ticket and all. That has nothing to do with uh, 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 ultimately the end step is is that they die homeless, lonely and all. That may not trigger that particular kind of thing and all. So this might stop here itself. This may not trigger the other one itself. But the arguer presents in such a way that as if it is the case that this triggers this and as a chain reaction this leads to this and this leads to this since it is a slippery slope now it, it all slips towards the disaster only there is no way in which you can recover and then come up and all because it is slippery so you will only fall and all you will be falling only all the way down the line. Another simple example which convinces, convinces us is this particular kind of example it so happened that you know a particular person uh, told a joke in the party and all. So out of his surprise it flopped and all. He thought that everyone will laugh at him, laugh at his joke and all but it so happened that it it flopped and all. Nobody laughed and then uh, nobody showed any reaction and all. So that is what has happened and all. So now he is uh, started in contemplating and all what went on wrong etc and all. Now he is falling into some kind of slippery slope and all. So now he's, he says this particular kind of thing. So everyone were everyone thought everyone there thought that I was a loser because you know he, he presented a joke but nobody laughed at him he thought he was a fool or something like that. So something like that. so I will never be invited again in fact if word gets out I won't be invited anywhere now he's into some kind of uh, slippery slope and all. Now I'm sure that they are all talking about my stupid joke so I have completely ruined my chances for a decent social life and there is nothing left for me now but years of loneliness and misery so how I wish so ultimately is uh, under the impression that I wish I would have uh, never told that particular kind of joke. It appears that you know just telling jokes leads to uh, misery loneliness and all kinds of things and all. It appears as if that you know the arguer is presenting in such a way that one triggers another one etc and all leads to some kind of disaster and all. This causal connection is questionable doubtful the first innocent step that he is going to take that is joke at the party does not should not imply that uh, years of loneliness misery etc and all that is what is to be considered as a total disaster. So there is no causal kind of chain which is uh, which, which seems to be the case existing in this case so this is called as another kind of false cause fallacy but it comes under the category of slippery slope fallacy. Another interesting fallacy which we come across uh, uh, in the case of inductive argument is this that we said that inductive uh, arguments based on analogy are inductive arguments. If the analogy is good enough then we say that it is a strong argument, it is a weak analogy then it is a weak inductive argument. So we use analogies to enrich our language and enlighten us with some kind of understanding when successful uh, it becomes appropriate and all. When the analogy is made successful then obviously the argument will be appropriate and all. So when we make comparisons that seems appropriate but it is not then obviously we end up with some kind of weak analogy or a false analogy and all. So this is the example which establishes this particular kind of problem. So the, the diagram for this particular kind of thing is like this. So in arguments based on analogy you have premises uh, that is a structure of any argument and all you have premises and you have a conclusion and the arrow says that it depends upon that means conclusion depends upon uh, inadequate analogy inadequate analogy if analogy is appropriate then it is considered to be uh, uh, good argument and all otherwise it is called as a it is it, it comes under the category of weak argument. So when we make comparisons that seems to be appropriate but it is not we think that it is appropriate but actually it is not then we end up with a weak analogy or a false analogy. So one example could be like this if a car breaks down on the freeway or uh, highway a passing mechanic is not obliged to render emergency road service and all. So when all of a sudden if a car breaks down and all and then there is a 
uh, service center somewhere else then he is not obliged to offer any kind of uh, um, offer any emergency road service and all he need not have to come and help you out and all. But for a similar reasons if a person suffers from a heart attack on the street a passing physician is not obligated to render emergency medical assistance and all. Here we are comparing breaking of car with uh, I mean uh, heart attack person on the street and all. This seems to be some kind of analogy and all in these kinds of things. So on the one hand you know if a car breaks down then the, the passing mechanic need not have to be obliged to render any emergency service and all. You can say I do not do anything and all. So today is holiday then you come tomorrow and all. But a doctor cannot do this particular kind of thing and all. All the time 24 by 7 he needs to offer his services and all. This field itself is a medicine field itself is like this that he has to offer a support to his patients 24 by 7 and all whenever it is one is in need. So you cannot uh, this analogy is uh, weak enough so that is why uh, this is a kind of fallacious argument and all. So some other examples are uh, this is the example for uh, this particular kind of thing appeal to ignorance and all is uh, somewhat different from weak analogy. So in the weak analogy the problem here is is that uh, you, you pose some kind of conclusions but the conclusion depends upon some kind of inadequate analogy if the analogy is not strong enough then it is uh, it is called as a weak inductive kind of argument and all. So some other examples uh, which we can consider and uh, so far we have studied different kinds of fallacies of weak induction now let us consider some more problems and see whether uh, what kind of fallacy it is. Now this example says that after centuries of trying no one has been able to prove that reincarnation occurs. So at this point I think we can safely conclude that reincarnation does not occur. So that is uh, that come under the category of uh, fallacy of ignorance now something is not false means it is true something is not true means it is false and all. So this kind of thing will come under the category of fallacy of ignorance. Some other examples like uh, this thing if professor Bloggs, the well known astronomer has done extensive research on distant galaxies he points out, the, points out that human bodies are composed of atoms which were once part of distant stars. So to blocks this some scientists this gives human life a sense of drama and significance equal to that of inherent in the world's greatest mythologies and theologies thus blocks corrects the common error of supposing that materialism reduces to the drama uh, significance of human life and all it seems to be some kind of uh, some, some, some kind of analogy which is present in this one seems to be some kind of weak analogy kind of argument and there are several examples in the textbook uh, concise introduction to logic by Patrick Hurley and one we, once we solve this uh, exercise and all we will will make our uh, this all these things will become quite clearer to us. Another example could be day all day always follows night that is a succession and all temporal succession and all and uh, you know the T1 a T1 day is the one and T2 you see night and all this is temporal succession and all. This temporal succession is treated as a causal kind of connection then you are said to be making this false cause kind of fallacy. So the two are perfectly correlated therefore you know what you are saying is night causes day and all. If that is the case then uh, it is called as a false cause kind of fallacy. Suppose if you say folk dancing is bad because it leads to some other kind of dancing which is western kind of thing ballroom dancing and all which in turn leads to some kind of modern dancing and then you are arguing that modern dancing leads to promiscuity and which causes total breakdown in the moral fabric of a country and hence a lapse into some kind of primitive savagery and all. It looks like that you know one leads to another kind of problem uh, one triggers another one and another triggers another one etc and all. Uh, uh, it need not be the case that folk dance is uh, the one which triggers the last step that is usually considered as some kind of disaster a lapse into primitive savagery and all that need not have to take place in the first innocent step does not lead to 
this particular kind of thing and all. It is also some kind of false cause fallacy which we studied in greater detail that is slippery slope fallacy. So far we have studied in detail uh, about uh, um, fallacies of uh, relevance and fallacies of weak induction. There are uh, three important fallacies which come under the category of uh, presumption, fallacies of presumption. So these are some of the important things which, uh, uh, which, are, uh, which we commonly see in day to day argumentation. Here what will happen here is premises presume what they purport to prove and all. So conclusion is the one which is the one which we need to establish, but that is also already presumed and all in the premises. So it results when an arguer makes some kind of unwarranted assumption. Usually such assumption, such assumption is illegitimate and unjustified and all. There are three such kind of fallacies uh, which we'll be talking about. There one is begging question fallacy, complex question fallacy, and false dilemma fallacy. We will consider one particular kind of fallacy and then we will end this lecture. So this is one of the frequently found kind of fallacy which goes like this an, argue, an argument begs the question when it assumes the point to be proved that is begging the question is also known as arguing in some kind of circles. Now. One example could be like this suppose somebody is arguing like this God exists because Bible says so and all Bible or Gita or Quran says so. But how do we know that God that Bible says is true because God, it is God's word and all I mean God's word etc and all. So now here what is the guarantee that God's word is true and all again you will fall back and say that God exists because Bible says so and it, the argument goes on in circles etc and all and each step it begs some kind of question and all. Premises presuppose that God already exists and all based on that you are trying to argue then that is why it begs the question and all. So this is called as begging question kind of fallacy. So the conclusion although valid sound at it begs some kind of question and all. So from the standpoint of convincing others and from the standpoint of discovering truth the argument that begs the question is deeply flawed and all because it begs question at each and every stage and all. So let us consider another example with this we will end this lecture God does not exist suppose if you ask why then he is giving this reason so because natural selection is true and according to the natural selection all species come into being by purely blind natural forces and how do you know that natural selection is true well it is the best scientific theory you know because of this best scientific theory obviously it has to be true you know. So you are falling back on you are making arguing in a, some kind of circles and you are saying that scientific theories of course by definition exclude any supernatural claims and assumptions that is why you know God does not exist and all. One proof we have seen is God exists and all because Bible says so but here you are proving that God does not exist based on natural selection. And all. So you are falling back on natural selection and what on what basis you are saying the natural selection is true again you are saying that our best scientific theories are true and all. on what basis your best scientific theories are true again you will say that uh, natural selection is true and etc and so and so and all. So in this lecture what we have done is this we have considered various fallacies of induction uh, fallacies of weak induction and then we have seen that in all these cases uh, the premises are not sufficient enough to provide adequate evidence to believe the conclusion to be true and hence it leads to weak induction and all all arguments based on weak induction are obviously fallacious and all there are some other fallacies all these fallacies are uh, you should note that they are all persuasive mechanisms every fallacy an arguer has some intention that is to persuade the arguer or reasoner or listener and all. So in all, all these fallacies are uh, some kind of persuasive mechanisms they are all important in day to day life when somebody makes this commits this particular kind of fallacy at least as a reader or listener whosoever is following the arguments from the debates one should be able to identify the flaws in the argumentation and all. So identifying and detecting the fallacies is another important uh, step which will uh, which is very important and all. So in all this fallacy uh, in, in this uh, uh, module uh, in this uh, part we have first we started with the formal fallacies and then we moved on to informal fallacies where informal fallacies can only be detected by analyzing the content 
and in that we classified fallacies of relevance and then we talked about fallacies of fallacies of weak induction and then there are some fallacies which arises out of uh, ambiguity in the language uh, or it might arise due to due to some kind of presumptions and all. So begging question complex question fallacy etc these are the things which will commonly come across in day to day discourse they all come under the category of fallacies of presumption and all. So with this we uh, will end this uh, lecture and then we will move on to uh, uh, formal logic uh, from tomorrow onwards so in the next lecture we will be talking about uh, some of the important features of uh, syllogistic logics and uh, these are the logics which have dominated for more than 2000 years this is definitely something uh, is most important to study uh, these particular kinds of logics which uh, helps us in understanding some of the important concepts of modern logic. So then we will move on to propositional and predicate logic.